Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As a bombshell sent shockwaves throughout the crypto market yesterday. And ladies and gentlemen, as I've let the dust settle, as I've looked at all the information coming out, wow, what an event. The domino effect is in place. The regulatory dominoes are falling. And before I play this clip discussing CZ Binance resigning as Binance CEO, before I play this clip talking about all the laws Binance broke, I have to remind you all this was caused by them collapsing FTX. These are the consequences. CZ is pleading to 18 months in jail. And considering what Sam Bankman Freed got, that's going to be a beautiful sentence for him to come out and see what happens afterwards. At the end of the day, this is going to be a seismic fine that Binance will pay. But before we get into anything else, I have to stress this is one of the most bullish things I've ever seen in the history of crypto. And I'm going to explain to you why. But first... Please take a listen to CNBC. You have some breaking news on a major crypto company, Binance. The CEO, Chang Peng Zhao, is pleading guilty to federal charges. He does plan to step down. We are getting some unsealed court documents in that criminal case against Binance. And they also released the plea agreement. It calls for the resignation of Zhao as CEO. It also prohibits him from any present or future involvement in operating or managing Binance. That is the world's largest crypto exchange. It also forbids him from talking about it. This is someone who has been very vocal on Twitter and social media. Binance faces three criminal charges, including conducting an unlicensed money transmitting business. They also talk about violating sanctions here. Starting as early as 2017, they talk about the defendant, uh, which is Binance, the company led by its owner, CZ, knowingly failing to register as a money services business and then willfully violating the Bank Secrecy Act by failing to implement KYC and money laundering programs. They say that caused the company to violate U.S. economic sanctions. They say it facilitated billions in crypto transactions without implementing any of that proper oversight, KYC, as it's known under the Zhao plea agreement. The defendant says that he will not work with the company. He will not speak about it through any future attorneys, agents, or other people authorized to speak about it, make public statements either. He is in court, guys, in Seattle, Washington, we don't have details yet. We're awaiting what comes out of that. But again, he is pleading guilty to what I mentioned earlier. The biggest crypto exchange in the world moving forward, I'm told the heir apparent is someone called Richard Tang, who is the global head of markets there. They say they're looking for a CEO at this point. No news on that, Kelly, but latest on Binance there. Richard Tang will be moving forward into the role of the Binance CEO. Binance is the biggest exchange on the planet. And they will ultimately be fine. But what you need to understand is that this was one of the biggest dominoes that has ever fallen in regards to crypto. Because, and I'm going to say this again and again and again, crypto has a regulator. And that will be the Department of Justice and CFTC. The SEC is nowhere to be found. Gary Gunsler has been deemed incompetent. I told you this was going to happen a couple days ago and like clockwork, it occurred. And at the exact same time, this market is so bullish to me because Binance is a black swan event. That was a big fear in crypto. It was supposed to potentially bit bring Bitcoin down to maybe 10k and send alts down as well. Now it's behind us and the crypto market hardly flinched. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Do you really believe we're not in the early stages of a bull market? Because I do. And regulations will only send us into the stratosphere even further. Here, the Department of Justice indicted CZ. And the reason they're giving is because they helped finance illicit activities. Instead, they concluded that complying with U.S. law would stifle their efforts to grow Binance's profits, market share, and trading volume. So, rather than comply, 
Binance facilitated billions of dollars of unregulated cryptocurrency transactions. It willfully enabled hundreds of millions of dollars in transactions between American users and users subject to U.S. sanctions. And its platform accommodated criminals across the world who use Binance to move their stolen funds and other criminal proceeds. Binance prioritized its profits over the safety of the American people. In part because of the crimes it committed, Binance became the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Now, Binance is paying one of the largest corporate penalties in U.S. history. Binance employees knew and discussed that the company was serving thousands of users in sanctioned countries. And they knew that facilitating transactions between U.S. users and users in sanctioned countries would be in violation of U.S. law. But they did it anyway. Binance enabled nearly $900 million in transactions between U.S. and Iranian users. And it facilitated millions of dollars in transactions between U.S. users and users in Syria and in the Russian-occupied Ukrainian regions of Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk. Finance's own compliance personnel also knew that the company's anti-money laundering procedures were inadequate and would attract criminals to the platform. In a February 2019 chat, one compliance employee wrote that they needed a banner that said, quote, is washing drug money too hard these days? Come to Binance, we got cake for you. By failing to comply with US law, Binance made it easy for criminals to move their stolen funds and illicit proceeds on its exchanges. For example, between- Four billion dollars, my friends. That is gonna be a massive fine and a massive win for the US government. But like Ripple's general counsel Stu Alderati said, the Binance resolution of anti-money laundering violations is a necessary step to bring the crypto industry into compliance with these important laws and safeguards. Ripple has always been in bed with the big boys. Ripple is in bed with the elites. Big banks all went through some version of this years ago. Importantly, nowhere does the DOJ suggest that Binance committed securities laws violation or even suggest that the assets traded on its platform are securities. The Treasury and CFTC joined the DOJ in the Binance deal, and notably, the SEC did not and was glaringly absent from the stage today. This sends a clear message that the agency under Gary Gensler has not become an outlier globally, but an outlier within its own government. The SEC, like a petulant child who can't stand being ignored, tweeted its misguided suit against Kraken. The same exact time the DOJ press conference regarding Binance was scheduled today. Truly secondhand embarrassment at this juvenile behavior. Remember that the SEC fabricated term crypto asset securities is nowhere to be found in the DOJ case against Binance, and it has no meaning under the law. The courts have been very clear that tokens are not securities. And wow, what a bombshell from Ripple. And what a glaring condemnation towards the SEC from our own government. We, the XRP Army, along with John Deaton and Ripple, did that, and you should all be fucking proud. Now, in addition, it's abundantly clear to me that crypto is here to stay, and Elizabeth Warren's anti-crypto coalition has failed. Gary Gensler has lost all of his power, and he tried. He tried to act like a little princess yesterday and bring on a new lawsuit against Kraken after they already settled. What a lack of good faith. But that's besides the point. The point I want to make is that despite Elizabeth Warren's anti-crypto army, she's failed, but at the same time, she doesn't want central bank digital currencies to fail. I told you, crypto will get political. Republicans will be on the side of crypto. Democrats will be on the side of CBDCs. They need it in order to bring on the agenda they want. 
And here, Elizabeth Warren admits she is pro-CBDC. Either way you slice it, in the way of the political aisles. Whether Republican or Democrat, XRP will succeed. XRP is crypto. And XRP will help with central bank digital currency adoption at some point. We are in a position where regardless of what side of the coin gets flipped, we will win. And that's why every single one of you are in the most powerful position of being in crypto. You own XRP. And it's a foregone conclusion that you will become the new 1%. What that banks do wrong, if you think we could improve that in a digital world, the answer is sure you could. But in that case, let's do a central bank digital currency. Are you there? Oh, for a central bank digital currency? Yeah. Yes. I think it's time for us to so move So essentially, because we're, you know, the thing is when you look at it, every piece of paper currency we issue, not with coins, but every paper currency has its own identity. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we're prepared for the blockchain now <laughs> with, with currency. Should that be how we build this? So I think of it as, again, what's the problem you're trying to solve? Mm -hmm. And if the problem you're trying to solve is fast, almost frictionless ability to send money across the country, do it rapidly, send it around the world, be able to send it to your cousins in Argentina. If that's what you're trying to solve, a central bank digital currency does that. And you don't really need a stable coin for that. You've already got a dollar denominated. You don't really need a Bitcoin to be able to do that. So then the question becomes, so what is it that the Bitcoin, what problem is it solving for? And now we get into a very different space. The space we get into is the space of Chinese bamboo, baby. We've waited for years. We haven't seen any growth. But we're about to be at the point in 2024 where we see all the growth of XRP all at once. Elizabeth Warren Without saying it, she's pro XRP. Central bank digital currencies is the agenda they all want. And Ripple and XRP have been working with the banks to inevitably be the number one option they use for interoperability. Oh, here, liquidity. We have that on demand liquidity. And I believe XRP will be the solution of the multi-trillion dollar problem the world is going to experience. Don't believe me. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable ball here. Thanks for tuning in. I can't reiterate how bullish I am on the space after all the events that happened yesterday. And every single one of you should be too. Nothing can bring this market down now. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow. With another video.